Hey guys, Claire here with Jump Rope Revival, where we're training body and soul. In today's video, we're talking all about shoes when it comes to jumping rope. A lot of people want to know what's the best shoe to jump in. Quite honestly, there really isn't a perfect shoe. Everyone has their own styles, preferences, and experiences that they have along their jump rope journey. But if you're just starting out, you're a beginner, you have no idea, or you just want to hear my suggestions and tips, I'm going to take you on my 12 year journey of a variety of different shoes that I've been jumping in. I'm going to give you the positives and negatives and then tips and suggestions on what to look for to find the best one. Before we put our shoes on, I want to start with a devotion. Today's comes from Romans chapter 10, verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Paul wanted to save people and make everyone right with God. God wants everyone to be saved. We are told anyone who calls on him will be saved. But my question is, how can people call on him, let alone be saved, if they've never heard of him? We, as believers, are called to be messengers. So put on your shoes, use those beautiful feet, and go and share the good news. Now let's talk about what shoes to put on. When I first started jumping about 12 years ago, I was using the jump rope as a tool to train for college basketball. So what other shoes did I wear? None other than basketball shoes. Basketball shoes are perfect because they are made for jumping. So my positives for basketball shoes, they're made for jumping and lateral movements. So if you're doing any kind of fancy footwork side to side when you're jumping rope, they're great for that. Also, there's not much of a bulky heel. It's pretty much level all the way from the heel to the toe at the bottom. So that gives you more of a level and stable platform to jump on. Also, the bottom doesn't have um, heavy treads or grooves. A lot of times when shoes have that, the rope can get caught underneath. The toe box is a little bit wider in basketball shoes, allowing your toes to spread a little bit more and give you better balance. And overall, around the whole entire shoe, it gives you great protection. So for me, these are great for jumping in and great for beginners. Now for my negatives. My negatives, it's a little bit bulky of a shoe, kind of heavier. And then also there's not much flexibility, which you would like to see when you're jumping on your toes. And then to me, they're really not that feminine and attractive looking. Because of the negatives I found in basketball shoes, I decided to switch to your typical running shoe. Now I like these because they're definitely lighter and there's a lot more attractive styles. But I had been jumping now for about five to six years at this point. So to me, transitioning from the basketball shoes to running shoes, I didn't see any major concerns. The positives to me is there's more attractive options they're definitely lighter weight, more flexible, and there's some cushion underneath the toe box to where you'll be doing most of your jumping, which is great for beginners. My negatives for running shoes is that the type of material there is here, there's not much protection of your feet. So when the rope hits, sometimes it'll hit your feet, I promise you, then it'll hurt a little bit more. Also, the toe box is kind of more narrow, so it doesn't allow your feet to spread, which gives you better balance. Also, there's not much lateral support in running shoes, so if you're doing any kind of fancy footwork side to side, it doesn't give you much support there. Also, some of them have a heavier, thicker groove or treads on the bottom. That's also not good because the rope, again, can catch underneath there. And then the biggest negative is the high heel in the back of running shoes. What that does is that doesn't create that level, stable platform for you to jump on and cause instability. And then also it doesn't give you as good of a feel for the ground because you're kind of leaning forward and you're higher up off the ground. Then there was a lot of talk in the community about barefoot shoes. So I decided to do some research and I became a firm believer. So I decided to give them a try. These shoes are definitely not for beginners, but at this point in my jumping journey, I had been jumping for about six to seven years. So my body, my muscles, my joints, everything was used to this kind of motion and this kind of exercise. So transitioning from a bigger shoe to a barefoot shoe didn't cause me any problems. I do, however, suggest that you research barefoot shoes to find out on your own why they're great for you and why they're good for everyday life. I personally happen to absolutely love them. My positives for barefoot shoes are, they are extremely, extremely lightweight. They are extremely flexible. 
and the wider toe box creates a better spread, more natural spread of your toes, giving you better balance to jump on. And that's what we do in jumping rope. We're spending most of the time on our toes. Imagine trying to jump on your toes like this versus your toes like this, which is gonna give you better balance. Also, there's no big bulky heel throwing you off balance, causing instability and not giving you a great feel for the ground underneath you. So there's a zero drop from the heel all the way to the toe. Also, there's not much cushioning, so it gives you a better feel for the ground, also creating a better, better balance, better level and stable platform to jump on. My negatives for barefoot shoes, I really only have two, and the first and biggest one is that they're not for beginners. You definitely need time to transition from a regular big bulky running shoe, basketball shoe, whatever, into this type of shoe. So please, if you are going to transition to these, slowly ease into them. My second is that because of the material and because of the lightweightness of it, um, when the rope hits your toes, it's gonna hurt. And no matter how advanced you are, it's gonna happen. Now, what about going completely barefoot? I have done that many times. However, I usually wear socks. Now, once again, I had been jumping at this point in my journey for about seven years. I don't recommend this for beginners. Like the barefoot shoes, you need to get your body, your joints, your muscles, and everything used to that type of exercise first before transitioning to either barefoot shoes or being completely barefoot. Now, there are positives for it. Number one, it feels natural, the way our feet were designed. And then also you get a great feel for the ground. Now my negative, I only have one, is that no matter how advanced you are, you are going to hit your toes with that rope and it hurts. The other shoes I have tried are skater type shoes. Now I'm sure you've seen plenty of people wearing these, like Vans, Converse, or the like. Yes, they look very cool, but I personally don't recommend them, especially for beginners. My positives with these shoes is that they're definitely stylish and cool. The toe box, some of them have this great protection here for those rope slaps that happen to hit your, your toes. Also, there's that zero drop that I talked about where it's flat pretty much from the heel all the way to the toe, which gives you a level, stable platform to jump on. Also, usually the bottoms don't have that big heavy tread or groove to where the rope can get caught on. My negatives for these is that they're somewhat heavy, they're pretty rigid, which doesn't allow much flexibility or mobility, and that the toe box is narrow, which causes the squishing of your feet, which creates less balance. I have two more shoes to review, and then I'm gonna give you a quick review of these shoes, along with some tips of what's best to look for in a jumping shoe. Long story short, I had knee surgery to repair a meniscus tear. Now, I didn't get that tear from jumping rope. It happened to be from a particular stretch that I was doing where I rolled my knee inwards and it tore my meniscus. So after coming out of surgery, when I was able to jump again, I didn't want to go straight back into barefoot shoes because I hadn't jumped in a long time and my body, my muscles, my joints weren't used to the exercise. Out of that fear and out of that uncertainty, I wanted to treat myself as a beginner so I wanted to find a shoe with more cushion. So I went with another running style shoe. This happened to be one that was extremely popular in the community, so I decided why not, let's give it a try. Quite honestly, I really didn't like it. Now it's not to say that it's not a good shoe, just for me, it's not good for jumping rope. Why for me? Because this huge bulky heel, I noticed a huge difference. I felt very unstable, it was kind of leaning me more forward onto my toes, causing more issues with my shins and my calves. And it just doesn't create a very level and stable platform to jump on. They really just weren't giving me a proper feel of the ground. Plus, because the toe box is narrow, again, it was giving me, giving my toes that squished feeling and I didn't have very good balance. With this, I was on the hunt for a barefoot style shoe a wider toe box, zero drop, but that also had some cushioning so that it could protect my joints, especially because I was just coming back into jumping after being out for a while from knee surgery. And I found the perfect shoe, the Ultra Escalante Racer. To me, this had everything I was looking for. The wide toe box to give you better foot spread and better balance. It also has zero drop, which again is no big bulky heel. 
So the zero drop, it means it's the same height from the heel all the way to the toe, giving you a very good level and stable platform to jump on. It's extremely lightweight, it's very flexible, and it has just enough cushion at the bottom to give you that support for your joints. I absolutely love these shoes. I want you to know I'm not a sponsor, I'm not affiliated with these shoes, it's just my personal opinion and what I found to be best. Now they're great to me, I suggest them for those that want to transition from the basketball or running style shoe, but don't quite want to go to barefoot shoes, this is the perfect in-between type shoe. My only negatives for these shoes is there's really not much protection up here in the toe box, so if that rope happens to hit your toes, um, it will hurt a little bit. And the only other thing is that, just like with running shoes and barefoot shoes as well, there's usually not much lateral support. So if you're doing any kind of fancy footwork where you're going side to side, doing different jump rope moves, it won't give you much support there, but I happen to still use them for those. But again, my body, my joints and all that are used to it because I'm now 12 years into jumping rope. Besides all of these shoes, I've jumped in many different types. And truly, you can jump in any type of shoe, especially if you've been jumping for a long time. Again, there really isn't a perfect shoe. Everyone usually finds their styles, their preferences, or experiences along their jumping journey. Okay, so that was a lot of information. I'm gonna go ahead and break down the positives and negatives of each of the shoe that I've reviewed. And now, here are the qualities that I have found to be best when looking for a jump rope shoe. Everyone is different, has different experiences, preferences, and styles, but I hope that this information in this video has helped you to find the best shoe for you. Let me know in the comments below your favorite shoe to jump rope in, or if you had any thoughts on the shoes that I reviewed. Go ahead and hit the like button if you like this video, and also be sure to subscribe to my channel to receive more videos like this in the future. Once again, I'm Claire, thank you so much for joining me, and as always, have a blessed day, and let's get training.